Uh, I'm a long way from home. I'm Andrew Paul Bacon, a uh, proud Yamaji man, Central Western Australia, country town called Geraldton, which is on the coast. That's my country, where my grandparents were born and raised. My grandmother, she was part of the stolen generation. She was my inspiration. And she's always stressed education as a key factor. I work for Sydney University in governance, risk and compliance. And I belong to a network through the Black Dog Institute to get the word out, to educate our mob. Here's my experience, here's my journey, maybe it might resonate. I've got one boy, 13 going on 16. He's always looking to the future. And I say, don't wish your time away. Nothing glamorous about my, my upbringing. Growing up in the 70s, some of my happiest moments were spending quality time with my dad, going fishing. I hated fishing. <laughs> uh, it, it was just the, the time with my dad, not necessarily the activity. Those memories stay with me in a positive way. Yeah, there were ebbs and flows. My father would unfortunately drink a lot. He physically picked me up and pushed me through a wardrobe because I was trying to get between himself and mum. I don't think I would have been any older than maybe 10. The belting was frequent almost every weekend, if not every week. And I remember my father getting smashed a lot of times and driving us home completely off his dial in the family Kingswood. Those memories are very vivid and crystal clear in my mind. Even if I told people what the situation was at home, they wouldn't believe it. I withdrew inwardly and I was probably the most introverted kid in my primary school year and the same through high school. Very rarely spoke, had little or no confidence. I believe that there was something wrong with me, as in it was my fault that this was happening, that my father would drink and beat my mother. Dad would get angry at the slightest little thing. He threatened me with violence when I'm trying to do my mathematics homework, physically hit me if I didn't get the answer out straight or I used my fingers for counting. It felt that both my sister and my behaviour was the catalyst for my father to drink and become violent towards my mother. It brought us closer together as she would protect me and I would protect her, but she just couldn't wait to leave home. Around 10 years old, I was going to run away from home. That's how I'm bad I got. My dad caught me. I said, I'm running away because I can't handle this situation anymore. The constant drinking, the constant violence, I've had enough. And my father was saying, look, things are going to get better. The catalyst for my dad to change was my mum leaving him. I was coming home from school, mum was walking out with two suitcases, and she said, oh, goodbye, Andrew. I didn't realise what was happening, and it left me completely gutted. I didn't speak to her for four years, and I'm still impacted even today. It was just myself and my dad. I was there, literally, to help my father get through his emotional journey. It became good, but it was decades later. I think I was 16 going on 17. I fell into a depressive state and I thought about ending my life. I was completely oblivious to the fact that perhaps I do have a mental illness. I just turned to drugs and alcohol to try and get through those very dark days. I guess that sort of baggage never left me. I was just so angry, so confused. A lot of the anger and violence was towards myself. I used to beat myself so hard, black eyes, bruised forehead. I would literally try to beat whatever the hell it was out of me. The violence that I put towards myself was so that I wouldn't hurt anyone else. But thankfully, I found outlets to try and channel that energy. I started practicing martial arts. The drinking and the drugs became less over my 20s and 30s, but the inner demons were always there. I had a brand new baby boy, proudest moment of my life, but the overwhelming responsibility hit me like a sledgehammer. It was a joyous time, but I had a mental breakdown. Not quite sure why I ended up in the bathroom, locking the door, turning off the lights, lying on the floor. I called Lifeline. I spoke to a very kind gentleman and we talked through the issues because that's the only way that I could stop the inner demons. There's only so many times that I could talk to my wife or friend. Calling, speaking to someone, it literally saved my life. I start my day with mindfulness. I diarise what I'm grateful for. Exercise, if I don't do it, I have a really bad day. My psychiatrist and I worked out the right medication and the right dose for me. It took many years to get to this point where I'm able to manage it a lot better. I have more good days than bad days now. I navigated my way through the mental health system simply by trial and error. My wife Grace has been my rock. Side by side we're walking together. She has been through all the ups and downs of someone with mental illness and she's still with me today.